pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Michael Garacciolo. He's Associate Professor of Medicine and Cardiology. He's also the director of our cath lab. He's got two lectures for us, one on CHF and the other on acute coronary syndromes. Dr. Garacciolo. Can everybody hear me pretty well back there? So, so I'll save you from the arrhythmias. We'll, uh, we'll do some heart failure and then uh, acute coronary syndromes. Nothing to dis disclose. Uh, so I'll just start with this because it's sort of the elephant in the room and uh, everyone sort of who, who takes care of heart failure patients has heard a little bit about um, the uh, CMS rules. But let's just talk about how broad this topic is. So heart failure is the most common DRG. It's the most common discharge diagnosis. It is the costliest um, medical problem in the U.S., $40 billion annually. And the CMS has passed this sort of readmissions reduction program, which is affectionately known as the rule. So in this process, your hospital actually has to send a check back if the readmissions are a certain rate. So this is why you hear this so much from hospital administrators and uh, the people you work with. Now, your performance at this hospital is judged relative to hospitals in your peer group. And that's patients, basically these hospitals take care of the same proportion of Medicare patients as, uh, as your practice. And CMS uses a factor, some sort of adjustment factor, to calculate the size of this payment back to them. And this is the, the reality that we all practice in. This is not um, just about heart failure. It's actually across many um, medical diagnoses, acute MI, pneumonia. The surgeons are not immune to this either, bypass surgery, orthopedic surgery. So this talk, we're just going to break down the, uh, the whole process of acute decompensated heart failure, taking care of the acute heart failure patient, which many of you do in your practice and have done for many years. We'll go through a case where we do the triage and sort of the workup of an of a acute heart failure event. And then this whole notion of reducing morbidity and mortality for heart failure patients will focus in on the group with reduced ejection fraction because that's where the data shows a lot of uh, bang for our buck in terms of medical therapy and device therapy. So fortunately for heart failure and a lot of cardiologies, we have a lot of evidence supporting the decisions we're making or the recommendations that we give. These are the practice guidelines if you have an interest. There's uh, updated guidelines here in 2017 as well. The Europeans have similar uh, guidelines for the management of heart failure and 